Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mindset Movement here with Tina's Ageless Kitchen. We're here. We're going to cook some stuffed bell peppers. Now, I don't know who has the book, Delicious Medicine. I'll just show it to you there. The Healing Power of Food by Tina Martini. Okay. If you have the book, um, turn to page 48 and 49. And here you will actually see the recipe that we're going to uh, use today. Um, so it's all there. All the details are there. It's amazing. You've got to get hold of this book. All right. It's on Amazon. Um, so we're going to stuff the bell peppers. You can stuff it with meat or without meat. We're going to use uh, tempeh. You're going to see that, which is um, uh, lots of grains all mixed together. It's like a stuffing. All right. Can't wait to get my hands on that. I'll be watching today. Um, why bell peppers? What are they good for? Bell peppers. Vitamin C. Excellent for the skin. Vitamin A, abscisic acid, one of the best cancer killers. We've spoken about this before, okay? It's not for, for nothing that she's called the medicine chef, okay? Um, what else have we got? Uh, tempeh is excellent for as a source of protein. So if you're afraid of going all vegan, you still like meat, but you don't like um, the part of the meat which is actually not healthy for you. Well, tempeh is actually a good um, compromise, so you, you might want to look into that, okay? So we're going to watch our Melissa Chef. You can follow along. Um, if you watch this on a replay, don't forget, hashtag replay. We're going to invite her on. I'm just going to put on a little bit of music. And we'll have her just after this. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Tina. Hey, good morning, staff. Good morning, chefs. How's good, everybody doing? Good morning. Great. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm fully in my chef gear today as I've got, I'm talking I to a group of culinary students after we're done with our food and fitness lovers. So I, really? got, the real, I got the real chef look on today. And I love what you're wearing. It's written mise en place, which is French, which means set up like a boss. Mise en place. Like a boss, look at you. That's a wonderful compromise between um, America and France today. So, is everything ready? All right, so we're doing the stuffed bell peppers today, like you said, out of the book. And um, it's one of the most requested recipes. It's a recipe from my mom, actually. So, the recipe is something from my childhood, one of my dad's favorites. But then I put the spin on it uh, for delicious medicine and put the vegan spin on it. So we're gonna Ooh. use tempeh today. So tempeh is one of my personal, if not my very favorite kind of vegan source of protein. And tempeh is fermented and we've talked about fermentation before and that really helps us with the assimilation of the nutrients. Okay. So there are many brands now and you can find it all over the place. When I first started, it was hard to find and it's not really something that we would make at home. So this is something that we're gonna buy from the store and then put our own flavorings on it. So you can see that it's compressed grains and legumes. It's got mm. organic soy, non-genetically modified uh, edamame. So great source of protein, as you Excellent. said, and a really great protection for our hormone receptors. So tempeh really is easy on the kidneys, where if we're eating a whole bunch of protein, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the pack open so you can see. And you can also see food and fitness lovers that I'm prepping these beautiful red bell peppers. Remember, people have a really hard time digesting the skin of oh, the, the green, green one. Pepper. That's right. right. That's true. So I've taken out the pith and the seeds and the stem. So I've just got nice halves here, which I prefer over just cutting the top out. Now you can do it either way. You can cut the top out and oh, have, whole, okay. you know, the whole pepper standing up and just fill that up like a nice little bowl. But I like to be able to have halves. It's a beautiful presentation and it's also a nice portioning technique. So if someone just wants a half of a pepper, that's great. Or if they want the whole pepper, that's great as well. You can, you know, kind of do a light lunch or a big hearty lunch and a lighter dinner, whatever you'd like to do. So a spoon takes out the pith really well or a melon baller. 
So if, if you've got one of those little melon ballers, you can just scrape oh, the piece yes. out because this is bitter. We don't, we don't want to eat that. So we're going to take everything out and make just a really nice vessel for our beautiful stuffing. All right, so my peppers are prepped. I'll just do one pepper right now. And let's go ahead and cut the package of tempeh open. And what I want you to see here, chefs, is that it comes solid in a block. So you can make your decision as to whether you want to cut it into strips. Like say you're, you're craving a grilled chicken salad, but you're not doing chicken. You could strip this out or like a flank steak or something of that nature. And then, or, or another recipe that I love that's really a big request is tempeh fajitas. Mm. So cut that into strips and let me just get it out here and you can see that it's nice and solid. Well, if I can get the package open, that's always something, isn't it? <laughs> here we go. All right. So it doesn't break up right away. It stays together really well. Okay, so it's just like a little loaf. And some of them are long rectangles and this one happens to be square. So you can see that if I run my knife through it, it holds up beautifully in strips. So you could actually put it on the grill. Just like that just on the grill the way it is and mark it that. and get that nice smoky flavor and then cut it into strips and serve it like you would a grilled chicken salad. Wow. 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 Yeah. So it's fabulous. Or dump these in a marinade like lime juice and, you know, soy sauce or Bragg's liquid aminos. If you want to get a little bit extra on the amino acids, I've got the Bragg's and it tastes very similar to soy sauce or Worcestershire, and that adds mm -hmm. in some more amino acids that help the body build the complete protein. Now today, we're going to fry it up like hamburger, so, mm. or like a ground beef. So if you watch me, let me just get a bowl here. I'll take my pepper out and use this bowl. It just crumbles beautifully. Okay. It's and perfect. now you've got ground beef. You know, or ground turkey or what, you know, you've got a substitute where if you want to do just kind of a fried up, um, maybe like a goulash or a stew of some kind, it just comes apart. But the nice thing is, is that it does have all the high protein grains. It is gluten free. So that's great if you're doing the gluten free. Okay. Vegan. So it's just really versatile. And there's a lot of really great phytonutrients already present without us doing anything. All right, so we want to prep the peppers first. Now you can go ahead and just cook your stuffing up. I'm going to get some fire going under our oil and go ahead and put the tempeh in. And you can do a little bit of diced onion, garlic. Um, now this is a great recipe to sneak some extra veg in. If you've got kind of a person that doesn't really care for the veggies, shred some zucchini up, shred some carrot up and put it right into the mix and they will never know. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in our hot pan. I've got a little bit of grapeseed oil and we're just going to fry that up. Now, what else could we add chefs? that would make it more meaty. Well, how about some Worcestershire sauce? And we've got the vegan Worcestershire without the anchovies. Oh. Anchovies are really high in omega-3 fatty acids. So if you like the regular Worcestershire. I love anchovies. Yes, me <laughs> as well. I know it's really not a, a, a loved ingredient as much as it should be. And the it. nice thing about the anchovies is they're such little teeny fish that you're eating the bones as well. And so it is a huge source of calcium. Oh. Uh, not, not only the omega-3 good fat and everything in the anchovies, but then you're eating the little bones, just like sardine or mackerel, really super source of calcium. All right, so we wanna get our water boiling here. And I already have a pot with the water boiling. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blanch the peppers 
to get them started cooking. Now these are really nice and hearty. You can see how thick they are, even though I've cleaned out the pit. So I really want to get those going first before putting them in the oven. Okay. Now, as I started to say just a minute ago, we could just stuff these the way they are and put them in our baking dish with our sweet and sour tomato sauce or whatever, if you've got brown gravy that you like or whatever recipe you love. I do a braised leek gravy that's out of this world. I love leeks. So oh. any kind of sauce that you want to do, hey, if you wanted to go southwest, you could do the poblano peppers, the really dark, beautiful chilies. They're not too hot. They've got a little bit of heat to them, but the flavor is magnificent. And you could cut them in half and clean them like we've done the bell peppers. Also use your yellow and gold peppers if you like, and you're getting all that great of cystic acid and vitamin A, as you mentioned earlier. Or if we're going Southwest, we could do the Anaheim chilies or the Pasilla or Poblano like they make the chili rellanos out of. And you could spoon salsa over the peppers once they're stuffed for your sauce. And there you go. I mean, Olay, huh? <laughs> Olay. Olay. <laughs> so today I am going with a more kind of classic beefy, uh, you know, more American kind of flavor profile. Uh, you can lean a little bit toward Italian. And so chefs, we know how to do a lot of things at once. So we've got our water boiling to blanch our peppers. We've got our pan here frying up our tempeh and I'm gonna start adding our flavorings in. And I'm also going to get our sweet and sour tomato sauce going at the same time. Now, I've got some beautiful organic crushed tomatoes here. You could use tomato sauce as well. But I felt like having a little bit of texture today. So I'm using the crushed tomatoes. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the, okay, let's get the packages open before we start. Huh? There we go. Okay, I got enough muscle today. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of that nice crushed tomato sauce in. I'm gonna add a little bit of Dijon mustard to our, whoops, we had mustard go all over the house here. A little bit of Dijon mustard into our tempeh so we can start building the flavor there. Excuse me, I just have to clean up my little mess here. And we've got our Worcestershire in. I'm gonna put some fire under the tomatoes. So you can see that you've got everything going at once. You're really multitasking and getting everything into the oven on time and to the table quickly. All right, so we've got our tempeh going. Let's go ahead and dump our pepper halves into the water. Now remember chefs, don't salt the water until you add the food in. We want to salt the water a little bit to pick up the flavor. If you put the salt in first and the water's boiling, the salt is going to pit your pan. It can ruin okay. your pan. So just to keep the surface oh. of the pan in, you know, in its integrity and really keep it in good shape, salt the water once you get the water really boiling and you put the food in. So I'm gonna go ahead and okay. just put a pinch of our pink salt here. We're getting our astaxanthin, our little pink salt. So that, oh, yeah. and remember astaxanthin is a nutrient, a phytonutrient that acts like the garbage collector and goes through our bloodstream and cleans our bloodstream out. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so I've got tomato sauce going over here. And I'm going to add in a little bit of sweetener. So I've got our coconut sugar, which is low glycemic, high mineral. Every disease known to man can be traced back to a mineral deficiency. As you can see with all the grains, the legumes, the tomato sauce, the coconut sugar. Bonjour. <laughs> That's my neighbor. <laughs> He's watching. Hello, hello. Good morning. Good evening, I should say. All right, so coconut sugar could be uh, honey. It could be uh, agave. It could be whatever sweetener you happen to have, some good quality organic brown sugar. 
but I'm going to use the coconut sugar today. And again, we're making a sweet and sour tomato sauce. So we've got a kick with the tomatoes. We've got just a little sweetener and, a, you know, anywhere between a teaspoon and a tablespoon, you're going to taste and decide. All right. So our tempeh is frying up here. Can you hear that? Mm, I want smell of vision. <laughs> yes, I know. And it does smell delicious because that Dijon mustard and the Worcestershire is a very happy marriage. Yes. All right. I've got some Italian herbs. But the herb I really want to talk about today is called summer savory. Now, I don't know anyone that uses summer savory. I don't know it. And if you look in your store, you'll see it. And it gives the most special savory flavor. It's right here. And you can see it's very similar to basil, marjoram, thyme. It's just another leafy kind of herb. And I'm going to put a little bit of that over the tempeh. And I'm also going to go ahead and put in an Italian blend. So we've got all kinds of beautiful flavors building, a little salt and pepper. And here I've got a little bit of onion powder. We can put in the diced onions as well. A little bit of chili powder, mild, and a little bit of garlic powder. Okay. So we're not going southwest today. As I said, we're looking for that rich, beefy flavor, but the chili powder is going to deepen the flavor. So we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle some of that in. And we want to really build in a lot of flavor chefs because the bell pepper, although it has a nice, sweet flavor to it, it's not really robust like we're looking for. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, it okay. definitely. All right, so now we're getting some yummy brown bits on the bottom of the pan. And that's also something that's going to deepen the flavor. And you'll see that it starts to take on a very beefy look. You know, it really looks like hamburger once you get all of the nice ingredients and get it browning. And it just smells amazing in here, chefs. That does all right. Look great. Great hormone balancer here as well. All right, so our peppers are looking good. Now, normally, chefs, what do we do? We put them in the boiling water if we're doing vegetables, uh, maybe broccoli or cauliflower. A lot of times, we will blanch them in the hot boiling salted water, and then we'll shock them in the ice bath. And that brings up like the bright green on the broccoli or the bright red. But today, chefs, do we need to shock the peppers? No. No, why not? No, not at all. We want them to keep cooking. We want a nice soft pepper. Now, we don't want mush, so we're just going to do a couple minutes in the boiling water. But if we shocked it, that would stop the cooking. And we don't want that. We want it to keep cooking. All right. Now, if you did the filling and then put it in the raw pepper, you'd have to bake it a good hour, a good 75 minutes. So the boiling blanch really speeds up our cooking to 20 to 30 minutes at dinner's oh, on the table. Okay? I see. So I see. I'm just, all I'm looking for is just a little softness on the pepper. I'm going to let them go just another couple minutes, and let's go ahead and finish our tomato sauce. Uh, do we have any questions? Not yet. I was just going to ask a question about the salt, um, about adding salt when it's really boiling. If we add salt too soon, does it um, prevent the water from, from boiling? Does it like it, slow down? It does. Yeah. It does okay. slow down the boil. So okay. it is a chemical reaction. So very good point. You're such a good chef now, Sass. I'm so proud of you. I mean, you're a master <laughs> in the kitchen, lady. Um, I love that. Yes. So the saline water is very heavy. And so the boil will not come rapidly. And also don't watch your water. Nothing slows down boiling more than us standing over exactly, it. Exactly, staring at it. That's right. So we want to just cover the pot, let the water come to a boil, clean our vegetables, clean our peppers, whichever ones we're using. 
And you know what else I've done with this recipe sass is I've uh, cut a zucchini or a yellow squash lengthwise and taken the melon baller or the spoon and taken out a little bit of the meat, thrown that on the grill, or you can put it down in a pan and sear the cut side and then fill the squash with the tempeh filling and bake that with the tomato sauce. It is delicious. Mm, so you've good. got a stuffed zucchini. Now the thing about zucchini chefs, it's one of the most genetically modified vegetables we have on the market. Okay. So things like zucchini, now yellow squash, not so much, but zucchini, we really want to try to buy organic as best we can. All right, so Very let's important. check on our sauce. Now what I'm doing is I'm just letting the water come out of the tomato naturally. I'm just evaporating it and thickening the sauce, richening the flavor a little bit. And you know, it really does smell like a vine ripened, really fresh tomato. So we've got that going. We've got our coconut sugar and we're going to finish the sauce with a raw apple cider vinegar. Now, what isn't apple cider vinegar good for? I mean, there's books just written on apple so cider healthy. vinegar. So, so healthy. And it lowers the blood pressure. It relaxes our vascular system. It also increases hair growth. As a lot of times as we start to age or if we're under too much stress, we're B12 deficient perhaps, our hair will start to thin. And uh, thyroid, thyroid challenges also bring on thinning hair. There's many, many reasons for thinning hair. And so the apple cider vinegar, if you rinse the scalp with a diluted apple cider, so one, let's say one tablespoon to one cup of warm water or, you know, kind of coolish, not cold, but kind of room temperature maybe, and you rinse the scalp, let it stay on the hair for 15 minutes and then rinse it out. It brings to life those hair follicles. Excellent. And it really does help bring the thickness of the hair back. All right. Excellent, excellent advice. Mm. Oh boy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fire off now. We've got our tempeh looking really a lot like ground beef. And let me just give you a peek here. Because you'll see we've got all kinds of yummy bits, and it's taken on the color of the um, Worcestershire sauce, which is what we wanted. The peppers look like they're just about done. Now, let me throw this filling in a bowl. So I'm going to clean this out, and we're just going to put our tempeh in here because we're not quite done yet. All right, and I'm gonna break that up a little bit. Let's put this in the sink. And now let's continue with our filling. Our sauce is reduced, so I'm gonna turn the fire off there. Let's check our peppers. And oh yeah, so you can see that the pepper, whoopsie, it's kind of hot. It's quite a bit softer and it's really, really hot. So it's gonna keep cooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the peppers out. We're gonna turn all the fire off right now. And just leave it there. You can see they're steaming hot. They've got a beautiful aroma. Our tempeh filling looks great. Now, if we wanted a little binder, we could add a little bit of the tomatoes or tomato paste would be great here. Just a little bit, couple tablespoons. And we've already done our mustard. Now I've got two grain sass. I've got a cooked brown rice and I've got cooked quinoa. Now these grains are whole grains. They're fantastic sources of fiber, but they've also got all kinds of hormone balancing properties and they're rich in amino acids. Now, the quinoa is really high in manganese. And we talked about this when we did our Spanish quinoa and sass, you know what would be a great filling for the peppers is the spanish quinoa you could just put that in your peppers oh, absolutely 
Oh, I made tacos out of that. I made black bean Spanish quinoa burgers. That Spanish quinoa is super versatile. Since the grains are already cooked, I, I say that we could add a little bit of both. Why not? And get a great texture. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this nutty flavor on the brown rice is different than the flavor profile on the quinoa. So it's all going to add that really nice nutty, yes, fantastic together. Now, let me ask you, how could we add another depth of flavor to our grains before we put them in our wonderfully fried tempeh or our, our seared tempeh? What could we do so, to add extra flavor? What I do, um, when I cook my, um, my rice, um, I cook it in broth. So instead, instead of just um, cold water, I cook it in broth and I add um, um, garlic powder. I add turmeric because I like the yellow color. Um, yeah. And I add obviously, uh, you know, the, the salt, the pepper and everything. But I make sure that it's flavored when it's cooking so that when it's cooked, I could basically, if I wanted to, just eat the rice like that without having to add any other sauce. That's the way we, we cook it back home. Oh, that is fabulous. And that was the answer I was looking for. So again, I know I say it constantly, but we're always looking to add that depth of flavor, yeah. you know, building layer upon layer of flavor. So perfect, Sass. That is just what I was looking for. So I've got a little bit of the crushed tomatoes in here. We cooked it in our uh, Dijon mustard and we could use the vegan beef base if we wanted in here. I mean, there's a number of things we could do. Now we've got our grains, and I'm telling you, I could just eat this right out of the bowl right now. I mean, it's oh, just, that good. It's just fabulous. Good. So I've got, I've got the grains in. Let's see, we might add just a little bit more S&P. We can taste for that. And then let's go ahead and get our baking dish together. There we go. All right, so I'm going to add... I'm going to add just a little bit of the sauce that's already made to the bottom of the pan. Now let's go ahead. You'll notice that I've taken the sauce off of the heat before I add the vinegar. We don't want to cook the vinegar too much because we don't want to ruin the nutrient profile. We are going to bake it in the oven, but at a more gentle heat. So I reduce the sauce. I'm going to finish with the apple cider vinegar and then I'm going to just cover the bottom of a baking dish with some sauce and it's just a tiny bit. You don't need a whole lot. We're just, again, we're just covering the bottom of the pan yeah. and now we're going to go ahead and put in our stuffing and boy, I like to pack it in chefs. I really like to give a generous amount. So now you've noticed that the peppers have cooled enough. They're still warm to handle them. And then let's go ahead and just turn the spoon over and kind of decorate the top here. You'll and there's, hungry. oh, and the aroma is just fabulous. Okay, so there's our little stuffed pepper. We'll put that in and Could kind of- can we put coriander on top of that, like fresh coriander chopped? That was would that be necessary? lovely, yes. Oh, yeah, that would be any of the fresh herbs that you like, basil, uh, cilantro, and, and that's what we call it is cilantro, but it is coriander. Oh, yes, yeah, cilantro. It's coriander in, in uh, English. Coriander, yes, English. that's right. American English is cilantro. Cilantro. Yeah, cilantro. And <laughs> here's the thing, chefs, about leafy herbs like that. They are high in a phytonutrient called a pigeonin. A pigeonin. A pigeonin will be, and har this comes out of Harvard School of Medicine over here in the States. Uh, Harvard has found that a pigeonin will eventually be the cure for ovarian cancer. Really? Ovarian cancer is a very insidious cancer. I mean, it really, you know, only wow. about 5% of women survive when they're diagnosed, unless they come see me, of course. And <laughs> so um, the epigenin found in the leafy greens is invaluable. I mean, it is really mm. 
a tiger when it comes to stopping the damage of the hormone receptors and protecting the health of the ovaries. So really fabulous that you would put the fresh cilantro over. And over here in the States, of course, that would be taking us in the Southwest direction, which I'm a Southwest girl. So, you know, I love my chilies and different things like that. So big shout out to the Southwest. Southwest. <laughs> the fed in the house. Okay. So look at that stuff, bell pepper. Yum, yum, yum. Look at that. Who wouldn't want that? You're not going to miss the meat. Not at all. I want it now. Right. The peppers are really, um, you know, they're still al dente, as the Italians say, to the tooth, just like we cook our pasta. And so the peppers will still have a little bit of firmness to them once they're baked. Again, we don't want to cook everything down to mush. So you've got that nice ground beef texture of the tempeh and the grains. You've got the sweet and sour sauce and the cooked tomato is loaded in lycopene. Lycopene is one of the most powerful anti-aging phytonutrients that we know of. It not only protects the heart, it eventually will be the cure for prostate cancer and it reduces sun damage by as much as 40%. So wow. you don't want sunspots. You don't want like the aging liver spots in that, or you want to kind of slow that skin damage down. Cooked tomatoes are the way to go. So this is just lovely. Now you'll read at the top. I'm just going to put in just a little bit more of the stuffing here. And just kind of stand your peppers up against the edge of the pan and pack that stuffing in because everybody's just going to love that. And then we're going to go ahead and get the rest of our sauce now. And I'm just going to nappe, the culinary term for draping. I'm just going to nappe the rest of the sauce over. Perfect. And let's take a look before we put it in the oven. All right. Mm, does it need to go in the oven? Well, I mean, you could eat it right now if you want oh, to. <laughs> together. I'm on my the way. Sauce, you know, it's going to marry the flavors together a little bit. So I'm going to put a cover on just to kind of continue to steam the peppers and really seal the flavor in. So I've got a moderate oven. I've got a 350 degree oven. And that's going to go in for about 20 to 30 minutes. And you put that on the plate with a beautiful green salad or some dressed arugula. If you like, uh, you know, pine nuts. I mean, this is a great time to use pine nuts and a little bit of lemon zest, very bright. And you just put those dressed greens, a nice fragrant olive oil and fresh lemon juice next to that beautiful, beefy, hearty, rich and tangy tomato sauce and the tempeh is so robust i'm telling you chefs that's some good eating oh wow look at that it looks amazing i can actually taste it although i'm not there oh yes it, it is fabulous it's imagine it with the worcester sauce and mm. you know, another thing that I've done with it, Sass, is I have stuffed really nice beefsteak tomatoes, like the really hearty tomatoes. You just cut the top off and use your melon baller or your sharp, you know, if you've got like a grapefruit spoon or a spoon that's a little thinner metal, and you just clean that out and stuff the stuffing in the tomato and put it in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes. Maybe you don't do the tomato sauce over that. Maybe you just use the hearty, beefy tempeh stuffing with your grains and then put your, uh, you know, a chiffonade of basil over top and serve the tomato in the center of the plate with a little bit of crispy chopped romaine around with like a nice Italian dressing. It's a fancy lunch. Your friends are going to be amazed and the delicious medicine is epic look at that she said it all guys this looks amazing it looks easy to make you definitely need to get the tempeh get, get our hands on the tempeh i've got to find yeah. that in France. but uh it looks easy it looks like something that even uh, a student could make 
you know, Absolutely. they haven't got a lot of um, a lot of money to buy lots of um, uh, ingredients and stuff. You know, whether it's quinoa, rice, it's sort of things you have in it, your in yes. your kitchen. Um, something like lentils. I mean, if you had the yeah. lentil soup that you make, Sass, you make that yeah. delicious yeah, I that soup. soup, you could reduce that down into a really thicker kind of sauce texture instead of a soup texture or not add so much liquid and make it more thick and hearty and stuff the lentils into the pepper and bake it and drape Ooh. like a brown gravy. True. Or yeah, it would Especially be if you have a bit of sweet potatoes, because sometimes I do sweet potatoes, sometimes I do carrots, sometimes I do oh, right. So yeah, that's true actually. I like the I like the soup kind. I like the watery kind. I yes. love to, to drink it as well. Mm. Oh, it's fabulous. Also, you could stuff a sweet potato with the tempeh filling. True. Bake the potato, cut it open, squeeze it and fluff it up, and then stuff the tempeh filling in. You know, just take it right out of the saute pan, hot, and it is magnificent. Really, I mean, I just don't understand how people can say that vegan food, uh, plant-based living is not just a, you know, exciting palate. I mean, people don't know. People don't know what they don't know. That's obviously. right. And I was the yeah. same. I thought it was just it was just salads. And when and you start to realize work. there is so many things that you can do which is tasty and yummy. You know, people say to me today, that macaroni cheese, how did you make that? I'm like, you see, oh. <laughs> vegan. That's Delicious. right. And so really just, just putting a little bit of a twist on what you already know and familiarizing yourself and looking at chopped vegetables just like you would ground meat. Mm -hmm. Looking at the tempeh, crumbling an, an organic non-GMO tofu. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could really stuff mushrooms with this. Like if you had a beautiful portobello mushroom, you didn't have peppers on hand, but you did have mushrooms. You could even do little bite sized cremini mushrooms with the tempeh filling and serve those as an appetizer. Yes, you would love that. It's That's all about an idea. It's all about building the layers of flavor cooking the grains in broth and seasoning, like you said. Getting really creative. You know, searing the tempeh and getting that nice, really brown bits that have all the flavor in the pan and just taking the time with your food. We put that together so quickly and dinner or lunch is on the table. On the table. Well, I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't know about yeah, everybody else. Too. I'm hungry. Thank you so much, Tina, for your time and your sage advice. We will Thank see you, you on Wednesday for our yoga session. Yes, yes. Look forward to it. Have an amazing day. Tina Martini, Ageless Kitchen. See you soon. Thank you so much. Here's to your health. Bye. Bye. Well, guys, you've heard it. You know, that was Tina Martini from the, the Ageless Kitchen. Uh, amazing. If you haven't already got the book, get the book, uh, I insist. Delicious Medicine, The Healing Power of Food. The one we did today was um, page 48, I believe. Um, but it's all there. All the recipes are there. All the, uh, the nutrients, everything that's good for the health, how to heal cancer with food. It's here. It's a small book. You can grab it on, on um, Amazon. You will not regret it. Have an amazing day. I'm going to leave you with a little bit of zik, as we say in French, short for music. <laughs>